If you go to Wikipedia and look up Lenz's Law, it reads, the current induced in a circuit due to a change in a magnetic field is directed to oppose the change in flux and to exert a mechanical force which opposes the motion. In other words, if you move a magnet near a non-ferrous uh, conductor, it will induce an eddy current in it which creates a magnetic field which tends to oppose that motion of the magnet. If there's no movement in the magnet, nothing happens. Faraday's Law in Wikipedia the electromotive force around a closed path is equal to the negative of the time rate of change of the magnetic flux enclosed by the path. In other words, if you're moving a wire or a loop of wire through a magnetic field, you'll generate a voltage and a current if it's a closed circuit, uh, basically how a generator works. Again, if there's no movement, if you're not turning the generator, uh, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to generate voltage or current. So you've got to have that changing flux through the conductor. So just wanted to uh, take a look at those and we'll go to the shop and do a couple demonstrations. When an electrical conductor is subject to a changing magnetic flux, such as this automobile alternator, electrical voltage is produced. If it's a closed circuit, you'll get a current. Electrical current can be used to create a magnetic field um, in a useful way, such as with this solenoid, where if you put uh, a current on this uh, coil, it'll move this rod in or out. We're not interested in those things. What we're interested in is the uh, eddy current you get, um, and this is described in Lenz's Law, that when you uh, a magnet, such as this permanent magnet, goes through a non-ferromagnetic uh, objects such as this copper pipe. The magnet won't stick to it. Ferromagnetic means things like iron, nickel, cobalt, or gadolinium, or various other alloys that where you can put a permanent magnetization to them and they're subject to a magnetic field, in other words, attracted to it. But what happens is the magnetic field as it's moving through this conductive non-ferromagnetic pipe induces little what they call eddy currents in here which create a magnetic field which opposes the movement of this and slows it down. It's a common demonstration. You can find a lot of them on the internet. My question when uh, I was looking at some of those was, how does the orientation of this magnetic field, in other words, how this is magnetized, how does that affect that? So I had some ideas to set up a demonstration on how to uh, see how that is in, how the magnetic orientation impacts that effect. So we're going to repeat this just in case you haven't seen it on the internet and do the other experiments I've created. This is what the magnet looks like going through the pipe. See it moves around as it interacts with the uh, eddy current induced magnetic field in the pipe itself. Okay, we're going to try to drop these two magnets simultaneously, one inside the copper pipe and one outside of it. I can't get them too close or they'll attract each other. As you can see in our simple demonstration, the magnetic field created by the uh, eddy currents induced by this magnet moving through here Definitely slowed it down. Very easy to see compared to a magnet dropped outside of the pipe. To see what just two stainless steel nuts would look like. Neither one of them is magnetic. We're dropping both through there. Essentially, no difference in speed. This is an Alnico magnet. I bought it from Scientific Direct online. The reason I got it was if you can see that, it's got the north and south poles marked. It's magnetized through this way. As you see, I'm wearing cut-resistant gloves. That's for handling the rare earth magnets, which I'll show you in just a minute. But uh, the reason I purchased this was I wanted, had to determine what was north and what was south on the rare earth magnets, and this was a convenient way to do it. So Alnico stands for aluminum, nickel, cobalt. They used to be some of the strongest magnets around until the rare earth magnets came about. 
And I'll show you one of those in just a minute here. This is a one inch cube neodymium iron boron magnet. It's super strong. I, they came as a package of two. I got them from Amazon. I think they're made by DIY Mag, I believe. But I used the Alnico magnet uh, to find out which was north and what was south and what the orientation was. Because the purpose of this is to find out if the orientation makes a difference in the eddy current and resistant to, to movement that we were uh, discussing. So that's what that's all about. This is the other one inch cube magnet I bought since I bought them a pair. You look closely, you'll see it's shattered. I accidentally let the Alnico magnet uh, get attracted to it and got out of control. These things are brittle, they're sharp. That's why I'm wearing the cut resistant gloves, so you got to be really, really careful. If you ever get two of these rare earth magnets together, they're very difficult to get apart. About all you can do is slide them apart. So, we're going to try our experiment now on some aluminum bar stock and uh, this is what I used it's uh, just two inch wide uh, one eighth inch thick just standard aluminum bar stock you might buy in a hardware store I sanded uh, the surface with like I think it was 320 grit to make it very smooth get rid of any scratches so we're going to use this I've got two of them because we're going to try to double it up also but uh, just wanted to show you what we're working with, and we'll look at the experiment here in just a second. Okay, I've got the aluminum bar stock set up, just an arbitrary angle. I experimented a little bit off camera, see what was a good angle. The first thing we're going to do is I've got the non-orientation sides marked with a zero, just an O. That's north, that's south. First thing we're going to try to do is just have one of the O's where it's not oriented, and put that on there and see how it slides. Slides pretty well, no matter which way I put it. Now, what we're going to do is we'll try putting the north side against it. Big difference. Much, much slower. Really no comparison. We'll put the south side against it. Same as the north. So we'll try one of the O's again. No comparison. We're going to take a little closer look at orientation effects. Um, again, this is, it's marked south here, north there, where there's a zero or an O, it is uh, not uh, magnetized through that direction. So what we're going to do is see if um, it makes a difference if north-south is oriented this way or that way. So right now, north is on this side. Okay. Now we'll rotate it 90 degrees. Not sure it really made any difference. We'll re rotate it another 90 degrees. Maybe a slight difference, but... A little hard to tell. Definitely, when you have a pole directly on it, makes a huge difference. That's south down, north up. We'll again try it again this other way. North this way, this side. Okay, 90 degrees. Maybe slightly slower. Still a lot faster than if one of the poles is directly on top of the metal. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to double the bar stock.
Okay, we're going to try one of the O's again. Still moves pretty fast. There is a slight difference, maybe, in one of the non-orientation sides for a show. Now we'll try the north. That's slower than just one bar stock alone. No doubt about it. We'll try the south. And it makes sense that having twice as much uh, metal there would make a difference because, after all, you're not going to generate an eddy current in air. So it has to have a conductive non-ferrous metal like aluminum to generate the eddy current in it to create the opposing magnetic field. So uh, we'll show you in a second one of the useful things you can do with this uh, effect. But I think this pretty much shows the difference. Okay, let's summarize what we found. This is north. When the north or south, either one, was oriented normal or perpendicular to the metal, you got the most drag. I can feel it right here just moving it. If you orient it so that uh, the north-south is this way, okay, it moved pretty quickly. Probably the fastest, north-south, that way, is probably slightly slower, okay? But by far, the most effect was north or south directly on, on the bar. And you can really feel that the difference just moving it across there. And we also found when you doubled the thickness of the metal that it made an even bigger difference. And, uh, and I think that's just simply because there's just more metal there for the magnetic field to interact with. It isn't going to interact with air. No eddy currents in the air. You've got to have a non-ferrous metal. Now this effect can be used commercially. In fact, it is used commercially for uh, non-ferrous scrap metal separators. Um, you know, the magnet's not attracted to something non-ferrous like this aluminum Coke can, but you can impact it with, with the magnet by moving it by it. And rotating magnets on conveyors can cause ejection of non-ferrous metal or normal ferrous metal. It can just be picked up with a normal magnet. But that's a way to use it commercially, and it is used commercially. So, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.